Welcome to Hotel Tech Clinic, a COVID-19 recovery masterclass. Uh, in this session, sponsored by Scient, we'll be looking at the must-have cost-effective tech solutions to drive post-crisis recovery for hotels. I'm Ryan Haynes, and I will be your moderator today. First, uh, thank you to Michael McCartan uh, for organizing this event, which was inspired by a recent Hospitality Net article looking at the technologies hoteliers should focus their attention on to drive the recovery in a much leaner, efficient and productive way. The five areas that we could be covering today are robotic process automation, guest messaging and staff collaboration tools, contactless payment and access control apps, robots, and cloud infrastructure. We've cherry picked some of the best solutions on the market from each of the key categories and invited their senior leaders. And they're here with us today uh, to respond to your questions. Uh, we've got uh, Alan Oriodon of Apiello, uh, Apaleo, Eric Tengen of Oki, Michael O'Connell of Clearchain Travel, Micah Estes Green from Maybot, and Jiris Prabhu of Instio. We'll be hearing from them in just a moment. As I mentioned, this is an interactive session and we would love to hear from you today. So please feel free to send us your questions in the chat function. And if you'd like to ask this question yourself to the panelists, uh, use the raise your hand function and let's get talking. The lockdown has certainly forced us all out of our comfort zone and accelerated the adoption of new technologies from say video conferencing to contactless payments, online collaboration tools and cloud SaaS systems that have kept businesses running whilst we're all working from home. The technology we address today is not futuristic, but it has given a boost by the very challenges we have to improve efficiency, drive down costs, optimize revenue opportunities, while improving the guest experiences. Now it's time to hear from our panelists. They only have 200 seconds to introduce themselves. If they run over, they will hear this. If they run over way too far, they'll definitely be hearing. We're going to be starting uh, with Michael O'Connell from Clear Chain Travel. Welcome, Michael. Thanks, Ryan. How are you today? Fine. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from your 200 seconds, sir. Oh, boy. Pressure's on. Okay. Thank you. How's that look? Looks gorgeous. Go for it. Excellent. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, those of you in the US, thanks for getting up early and joining us, uh, the rest of the world. Hope the day's going well. Um, I'm Michael O'Connell, I'm from CEO from ClearChain Travel in the United States. And we are a robotic process automation and blockchain company for different uh, travel companies, hotels specifically are the topic of my presentation today. <clears throat> Here's a little company background. We incorporated almost two years ago. Uh, we have offices in Washington, D.C., Miami, and Dallas. Our business model is four streams of revenue, SaaS, uh, software development, data licensing, and consulting engagements. Uh, we've been bootstrapping through our initial growth phase. We've com successfully completed four different uh, proof of concept pilots, and now we're out raising money. So anybody in the audience who's an investor, please uh, hit me up if you enjoyed the presentation. My two co-founders are Fred Bean and Steve Denny. Some of you have been in the uh, travel business for a while, probably know the two of them. Fred is uh, in Miami Beach and Steve is my partner in Dallas, a little biography for them. Um, if you know the two of them, you're uh, I'm sure familiar with them already. So what do we do at Clear Chain Travel? We do, as I said, robotic process automation and blockchain for the travel industry. As most, most of you know, lack of technology innovation has caused a lot of problems in the travel industry. We have inefficiencies with middlemen. We have problems getting bills paid. We have a variety of process problems that are focused on legacy systems and paper. And what we're trying to do with the advances in automation and blockchain technology across other industries is apply those to the travel industry to help people's business. In the COVID era, that's even more important and we'll get into a couple of reasons why. So what we want to do with uh, robotic process automation and process automation generally is use the downtime that you have right now to understand your processes better, whether it's closing the books, your supplier relationships, how group and meeting sales work, uh, invoicing your vendors, all those things that are paper-based right now can be automated. Now, not everything should be automated, but there are a lot of processes that can be to add to efficiency. And we think in the current environment, this is the right time to do that. 
Uh, the automation of repetitive processes frees your employees to do more with guests. So guest engagement is so critical right now that we think building your, rebuilding your brand will be served well by automating processes in the background. And of course, there are gonna be new labor costs for cleaning, sanitizing, some of the things that my fellow panelists will be talking about later on in the presentation. If you automate those existing back office processes, you can save money that's gonna go otherwise to hiring new staff for the new normal of sanitization and, uh, and taking care of the uh, health related issues inside the property. A little more about process automation, manual business processes breed customer unhappiness. If you don't get a good bill, if you're having a problem with your customer service, if you have to go back and forth with your uh, uh, customer engagement, people don't like that. So hoteliers can use automation to create an enhanced customer experience, more accurate billing, more timely responses to common inquiries. Uh, ownership and management will get better reporting and insights into the performance of your property if you use automation properly. And there's a financial cushion involved here for future shocks. We're not sure that COVID is the last uh, time that we're gonna have to deal with the pandemic or some, something that's related to climate change or something political like a lot of experts are talking about. So automating processes gives you that cushion for dealing with uh, problems in the future. And more than anything else, you can do more with less. Be accurate, be efficient and flexible to accelerate your recovery. Blockchain is related technology in the sense that we can start with automating financial processes and back office processes and turn those into smart contracts, which go on the blockchain. Those digitized agreements with your vendors and suppliers will allow you to continue to do more <clears throat> with your existing cash on hand, reduce breakage for accounts, and get your sales processes more securely uh, stored for auditing, tracking, and other um, post-stay events. So what I'd like you to think today, because I know Ryan's about to give me the buzzer, um, think about how technology can be a solution. Don't be intimidated by the terminology. We're in the next normal now, which this means that the old ways aren't going to work. Your annual and even quarterly financial and operational forecasts are meaningless in the COVID era. So what can you do to fix that or at least mitigate the problem? How do you demonstrate to your management and ownership that your recovery plan is the right one? How are you gonna deal with your customers to feel assured and safe about staying at your property? And what are you doing that your competition isn't doing to rebuild your loyalty and get new business? So that's what I hope you'll get out of the session today. I'm gonna to hand it over now before uh, Ryan Hook gives me the hook. And I hope uh, we can uh, hear some more from you going on about process automation and blockchain and what ClearChain can do for you. Wonderful, thank you very much uh, indeed uh, for that. And uh, I did hear your own buzzer go off in the background there. <laughs> so uh, you are obviously well organized. Uh, thank you. We're gonna head over to Eric Tengen now from Oki. Hi there, good afternoon. Good afternoon, welcome to Amsterdam. Thank you, I look forward <laughs> to visiting in person very soon. Yeah, yeah. If you can cross the border, I'm sharing my screen, can you see it? We indeed can. Thank you very much. Perfect. So, hey everyone, very nice to meet you. My name is Eric. I'm co-founder of uh, Oki, living in Amsterdam since many years now. I'm originally from Malmö, south of Sweden, where Slatan is from. And a fun fact, I used to be a DJ. <laughs> and starting the presentation. So, in this very peculiar situation we're in, I'd like to highlight two things. Um, from the guest perspective, we think that the downturn is impacting the guests on finances and uh, guests generally will be more worried about health and safety than ever before. At the same time, on the hoteliers side of things, it's a very challenging time that they need to generate profit from fewer guests and actually provide greater value uh, at lower cost. And looking at some post-COVID traveler trends, while it may be incredibly challenging, we actually see quite some opportunities. And Two of them are highlighted here. So one of them is related to social distancing. We think that while we move, well, while actually the industry is forced now to move from physical to digital touch points, there will be a lot of thirst for information from guests before arrival. Will there be breakfast? Where can I park my car? Can I use the spa and so on? And uh, we think that uh, if you use technology in the right way, you can turn a lot of these questions into transactions. Also, we think that guests, while they may have less money on the bank, uh, when they do travel and when they do go out, they will likely pamper themselves. Another opportunity to drive more revenue as long as you're relevant in what you're offering them. 
And this, uh, my friend or our friend Clinton from Apex said in a very nice way, he said, hyper-personalized and safe product services or experiences will be key, giving guests the confidence that we are going out of our way to provide for them. And this is exactly what we at Oki do for hotels. So oh, well, yeah, what is Oki? Oh, there was some noise on the background. Uh, there, there was, um, what we do is we're an automated upselling platform that help hoteliers deliver the right product to the right guests at yeah. the right time. Um, and what we think is, although we're an upselling platform, we don't necessarily look at how do you maximize revenue, but always look at the guest experience first. And we're predominantly working in the pre-arrival space. So we really look at when should you offer something to a guest? What should you offer and how should you offer it? And we look at really the needs of the guest first, because if you can nail that, then you automatically create a better guest experience, which translates into higher conversion and in the end revenue. Uh, and we sit on currently today an 83% email open rate and almost 11% deal conversion. Um, so one thing when you think about upselling is that content is king. So we built a content management system, which is self-serve and built for multi-property, where basically you can create uh, new content deals just in a second. Um, and it includes a lot of flexible settings like dynamic pricing and really flexible content settings. So you can make get it super relevant for, for your property. Um, and we also, since the day we started Oki, have now generated a database of 8,000 vari variations of upsell items. Uh, so we sit on a lot of knowledge around what you should offer to different types of guests, uh, which can be helpful for hotels as inspiration. And specifically for COVID, so maybe this question will come later, what should we do uh, and what do guests care about? We actually built a post-COVID deal library and put this into Oki, translated it into 35 languages and bought a bunch of images we think will convert. So we can talk more about that later. I wanted to finalize with an interesting uh, stat, which is uh, hotels in Sweden. So here we have uh, a trend line of average revenue per guest in regards to upsell data. And the 1st of January, 2020, we averaged uh, 525 six sec which is swedish crowns which is like 52 euros which i don't know how much pounds that is but it's 52 euros ish and actually we upsell into the future of course because we are doing arriving arriving guests and we see on the 29th of june there's actually an increase in average spend per guest that buy something via upselling via digital upselling so although the amount of guests obviously have heavily decreased we think this is a very encouraging stat which shows that those guests that still travel, they do spend in some cases even more than they did before uh, every time that they buy something. So um, to round up, knowing that hotels have a very tight budget uh, and little to no time to implement anything new, we implemented the most flexible offer we could, we could ever think about, which is essentially that you get Oki for free for 90 days, you decide when to go live, uh, the, order, the contract terminates right away after 90 days. So you can just decide if you want to continue. And uh, if you sign up in this quarter before the end of June, uh, we have time to help you with your setup to make it as easy as possible. Please head Wonderful. over to oki.com for that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed there, Eric. Uh, sorry to have to stop you there, but keeping on with the time, that was a great presentation. Guys, remember, if you've got any questions, this is an interactive session, so please do send them to, to us in the chat and uh, we'll come to you and we can get that question. We're going to head over to Jirish now. Hello there. Good afternoon, Jirish. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Ryan, uh, and hello, everyone. I'm just sharing my screen to let you know. That's excellent. We've received it. Let you continue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, it's very tough time. As we all know, we are living in a touchless world and uh, people, you know, having priorities. I mean, earlier is not more, no more important. The thing, you know, the priorities have changed to being safe and healthy. Um, so, you know, you have to, all the hotels have to now take care of both the guests and the staff safety, along with being productive and profitable. So a lot of the ground rules actually changed or you know, evolving. So a lot of the high touch hospitality that we used to have now moving to a non, 
uh, you know, touchless or a contactless, you know, mobile based part. So main of that is mobile check-in and, uh, you know, digital dining and payments, etc. I'll get in details. So this is uh, all integrated one single platform for touchless hospitality, providing mainly touchless check-in, dining, guest messaging, and service requests. Our major modules include uh, hotel CRM and loyalty, marketing, and for you know staff, we have staff app where every staff can communicate with each other, also with the guest, so that you know, you still have the safety factor you know, taken care of. And we also have operational excellence platform, which takes care of all your back, back office and your hotels operations. So here, you know. We all know that you know now that it is a reduced you know you have to work with reduced staff, and this is going to be very important to have an operational excellence so you can still maintain your SLAs. Just to show you what a really value that we are going to you know propose to the new era of COVID nineteen is basically we support safe distancing and touchless using our guest app, messaging, and mobile check in. So your staff can be, you know, from anywhere, like they can work from your premises or they can be working from home itself. Like they can approve your pre-check-in and take care of your payments, everything from their home itself remotely. So, and we can also help you to protect your staff members to reduce their interactions. There's no more interactions needed because the staff up can communicate and it all works along with the operational excellence, helps you to basically take care of all the operations that you may otherwise have, which is high touch. One, you know, since we are working from remote, now there's a new opportunity that's opening up, which is, you know, remotely work and manage multiple properties. So you have, um, you know, you may have uh, one or reduced staff who can now take care of multiple uh, properties or multiple locations handling the pre-check-in or the work order related items. Uh, important thing, gone are the days where, you know, customers are going to get into OTA and look for a hotel and then, you know, come with a reservation. So here, every penny is important. So you can reduce the OTA fees now by using our marketing tools and CRM which actually generates more direct bookings. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you very much indeed, Jirish. Um, that was dead on 200 seconds, well practiced there. Uh, so thank you very much indeed. Guys, don't forget, you can keep asking our questions. We've had a few come through on the chat and we'll get to those just after we've heard these presentations. We're heading over now to Micah Estes Green from Maybot. Hello there in the US. How, is, how are things going on your end? Hey, good morning. Uh, things are great here in Austin, Texas. So glad to be joining a lot of you that are not in the US as well. Uh, so I hope everyone's having a great afternoon. I'll let you take control, sir. Great, and just making sure you can see my screen. Yes, we can, thank you. Perfect, okay, cool. So yeah, my name is Micah Green and I'm the founder, president and CEO of MadeBot. So at MadeBot, uh, we are on a mission to build robots to empower humans. So not sure if anybody has seen the Jetsons out there, uh, but we were actually inspired by Rosie and that's the big vision down the road. Um, but really for some context, I actually worked as a room attendant or housekeeper uh, as part of one of my classes at Cornell University's hospitality program. Uh, and that's where I uncovered a lot of issues around housekeeping as a whole and commercial cleaning. So, uh, you know, the first piece is that there's this huge labor crisis uh, and this is you know pre COVID there's about a million open positions uh, in housekeeping in the US alone. And that issue transcends you know, beyond the US, all over the world. Uh, so saw that and also realized that you know, housekeeping is the most expensive variable cost at any property you look at. Uh, and that cost has been going up over time as well. And the last piece is you know, really quickly started to realize that uh, clipboards and walkie talkies have been pretty much the latest and greatest innovations uh, that are across the industry. So, you know, took all of that together and realized that there was a huge opportunity uh, to actually bring robotics into housekeeping and into the operations as a whole. 
So we ended up building Rosie, which is the world's first housekeeping robot for hotels and commercial real estate. Uh, and Rosie is essentially a mini self-driving car that happens to clean. Uh, so it uses LiDAR, uses SLAM technology, just like self-driving cars. Uh, and we focus on primarily carpet cleaning, so vacuum cleaning. Uh, and we also realized that when you're cleaning the floors, this requires a device or a person uh, to go basically every square foot of a building pretty much every day. So we realized there's huge potential, uh, given that this robot is essentially a computer on wheels, to actually capture data around what's going on in the environment. So I'll touch on that in a bit as well. And being able to visualize data, not just over time, but actually over physical space, like heat maps. So just to give a general sense of how Rosie would work, uh, you know, the actual room attendant would do everything the same, uh, except deploy the robot early on in the cleaning process. Um, and then it changes it from, you know, the serial process to parallel process. Um, so with that, we see an average of about five minutes of savings in the room. Uh, and then those same robots can actually be used in public spaces like you saw in the previous picture uh, and can work together to clean hallways or meeting space or, you know, bigger rooms as well. Um, so see big potential in the rooms and then outside of the rooms. I've gotten great data there. Uh, and then on the data front, are able to capture things like environmental data. So, you know, as an example, Wi-Fi signal strength is really interesting to certain clients uh, because if you're a business hotel uh, and a guest might complain about Wi-Fi, you might have to give a discount or free drinks or free food. Um, so if you're actually able to measure that proactively, you could either, you know, avoid selling that room and fix the problem in the first place if the Wi-Fi isn't great uh, or redirect the guest. So, um, so that's one piece. And then the operations data of how long it's taken to clean uh, benchmarking that across the property, um, and then really looking at the robot health as well and being able to see that. So again, an uh, indoor mobile, mobile data platform. So in terms of one of our deployments, we got some really good results. So this was at a you know, Hilton Hampton Inn in Buda, which is close to Austin, uh, and got to see some really big, uh, a really big impact in terms of the deployment there. So average of you know, five and a half minutes per room of, of savings, um, and then, you know, able to clean more rooms given, given that time savings as well. And then those robots were also used in the corridors as well. So, of course, we're talking about COVID and I think, you know, some of the fellow panelists have talked about this as well, but um, there's this huge increase in, in cleanliness standards, right? And uh, I joke that my aunt is a germaphobe and now a lot more people are as well. Um, so there's this higher expectation. Uh, and then the human-human interaction has also decreased. There's pressure to social distance and keep distance there. Uh, and the last piece is really the operating expense push, right? How can we still drive uh, a reduction in operating expenses given the impact on revenues as well? So from our perspective, we see a huge opportunity with robotics, with what we've built in terms of being able to save that time and allow team members to focus on high touch tasks like sanitization and disinfecting. Um, and then we also see leveraging that platform to go from vacuum, vacuuming uh, to sanitizing. And then just wanna leave on a, on a note, of course, there's a lot going on in the world with COVID and outside of COVID uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement. So just leaving it with LAYSL, we must always take a side. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Uh, Thank so you very me. much indeed, Micah. I couldn't stop you before you finished that quote, otherwise I would have buzzed you there uh, for that final last few seconds. But great presentation. Thank you very much and very visual, so uh, appreciate that. Uh, coming to our final panellists, uh, don't forget guys, you can send us your questions through the chat. We're over to Alan Riordan from Apaleo. Hello there, Alan. Hi Ryan, hi everyone. You can hear me okay? You can see my screen? We can indeed. Everything's in position. You can Good. Go. Well, let's get started on the 300 seconds then. So for those of you who don't uh, know Apaleo, we uh, position ourselves as the world's most connectable PMS. Uh, we've been around for about um, three and a half years now, and really our mission is to, um, is to overcome those challenges that many of us might, uh, might be familiar with when it comes to legacy PMS. I've listed some of them on screen there probably don't need to go through them, but just, um, I guess, as a summary, um, in my 20 years of working with hoteliers in the world of PMS, um, I often hear the phrase open heart surgery when it comes to trying to do anything with PMS, any changes that you need to make. So how do we go about um, making that better? Well, it all starts with our 
cloud native, multi-property, lean and self onboarding PMS. The self onboarding part of that is quite an important central tenet of our philosophy. And we believe that most of the, much of the frustration that hoteliers have experienced with PMS is because they've had too much reliance on the, the vendor themselves. So we've designed at the core of our philosophy a PMS which um, allows the hotelier to take control from the initial implementation all the way through to the ongoing management of the system. The lean part of it relates to the core functions of PMS that we're focusing on in, in our design and our development. We are not attempting to build third party modules such as CRM or BI or CRM or even upsell, Eric will be pleased to hear, because we believe companies like Oki do these things much better than we do. But in order to make them and us succeed, we need to provide much better integrations than have previously been possible in the world of PMS. The way that we do that from a technical perspective is by being API first in our approach. Not a new concept generally, but new to the hospitality industry and a first for PMS. From a hotelier's perspective, what does that really mean? It essentially means that we provide full access to 100% of our PMS logic and features for anybody who wants to connect to us. There is nothing in our PMS all the way down to configuration that cannot be connected to. So connectivity can always be real time and two way. It's possible for one click connect integrations to be enabled so that the hotelier can actually connect the two systems together themselves without needing the vendor to do it for them. We also allow third parties to embed screens or data from their systems into the PMS workflow to make, make for a more seamless experience for the PMS user. And we can allow people to customize at will all without charging anything at all for that. Um, we support that with um, uh, our, what we call our Appaleo store, which is a little bit like an app store on an iPhone, for example. It's essentially a marketplace where hoteliers using Appaleo can browse innovative solutions that are available today. They can typically trial those solutions for a period of time and even connect them to Appaleo for that trial period. So essentially we're allowing hoteliers to build their own tech stack, which is precisely designed to suit the needs of their particular hotel. Those integrations will always be free forever. We will never ever charge a single penny for an integration. So we're really moving down the route of that smartphone experience that we're used to from a consumer perspective. In a hotel or in a COVID-19 context, um, to illustrate this, we have partnered with 40 vendors, including Oki, and we are offering a bundle to hotels that are reopening who want to be COVID-19 sensitive, which allows them risk-free and at no cost to implement a tech stack which will allow them to support that COVID-19 initiative. Um, that's it. I think I've just about made it in time. Thanks very much. It is perfect timing. In fact, it's 199 I got to. So well done there, Alan. Thank you very much. Um, a round of applause indeed. And uh, so thank you ever so much for everybody who is uh, joining us now. And we're going to be turning to the questions. And actually, uh, we've got uh, two qu a question here um, from uh, Andrew and Andy, um, which is... Uh, they're experiencing the same problem and I think it's a great way to be able to start especially as we're looking towards new technologies and and that is how do we ensure that technology is an enabler and doesn't deplete the personal service that hospitality is famed for so how is technology an enabler and doesn't deplete the personal service um if I go over to Jirish first thanks Ryan uh, <clears throat> yeah actually uh, I would say, you know, the technology is just an enabler. I agree to you, even, even we uh, keep that same philosophy with us. So here, you know, uh, no technology can replace uh, any, you know, manual interactions, that's for sure. Only thing that we can help you with is a lot of processes was, you know, like Michael was explaining in his tech, a uh, lo lot of pre-check-in or operational processes that we follow can be digitalized which actually helps the productivity and experience of the guest. Still, we still need to deliver, we still need to service, and we still need to cook and make them dine. So that is no more, you know, can be changed with the technology. We are just an enabler. We are going to help you achieve that at the fastest pace. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, if I hand over to Eric now, uh, seeming as uh, your technology or, or your service directly speaks to the guests. Yeah, very, a very good question. 
Uh, first of all, I would definitely agree with Girish. There's a lot of manual processes. I heard a funny anecdote saying, when you arrive at the front desk, it's like you're at the police. You can I have your name, number, and passport? And they are like, yeah, take everything. Um, but for the rest, I would say, um, if you want to speak the language of the guest in the way that the guest is, is used to communicate, you need to be at the channel in which the guest normally communicates. Uh, so in, in regards to the digital um, service that you need to provide to your guests, because guests are more and more uh, digital and will be more and more post-COVID, we see family dinners being held on Zoom with family members across the, across the world. Um, I think it's certainly an enabler and um, it, it will come down to how well do you know your guests uh, to the T that you, for example, will communicate to your Asian travelers via, we, via, via WeChat and your European travelers via WhatsApp and perhaps uh, a certain, another segment via SMS and another one via email. And even more so, change the channel that you communicate your, with your guests with depending on where they are in the customer journey. And some of that will be offline, face-to-face, -face, and some of that will certainly be online. Uh, so that depends um, quite a bit. But the fascinating thing is that you can learn a lot by uh, analyzing data and looking at consumer behavior. And there's a lot to win for those that act fast, I think. Thank you, indeed. If I head over to Michael O'Connell now, how would you answer that question? You know, I, I think what Jirish and <clears throat> Eric said is accurate. I, what I'd point out is that so many hotels spend so much time on manual processes with paper and with other things when you really want to train your employees to engage with the guests. And I touched on this in my presentation, but right now it's more important than ever that your employees get out there, talk to the guest, understand with physical distancing what the guests really need so you can bring back that feeling of hospitality. And for me, technology is that enabler. It allows uh, the processes behind the scenes to take place run by themselves. You don't need a human being to waste their time doing that. You can train the humans on the humans, the people on the processes that matter in terms of guest engagement, building the brand, all those sort of things that hospitality is known for. Thank you. How about yourself, Micah? How would you answer that being an enabler versus uh, dealing with uh, the guests? Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, a lot of the fellow panelists nailed it on the head. And, and when I think about this, you know, how can you actually take off some of the load uh, in terms of back of house to be able to provide more of that service on front of house? So um, honestly, not too much to add other than I think those efficiencies and that productivity gain there frees up that time to be able to, you know, really invest more and have a higher touch with the guest experience. Thank you very much. And one of our other questions actually is around sort of a decentralized model of tech stacks. And perhaps, uh, Alan, uh, you can come in here to ask, answer this question. Is, is it going to be harder for hotels to be managing multiple vendors rather than just a single vendor if, if they're looking at um, developing a platform that's able to handle multiple different types of um, systems and capabilities? Um, not from the experience that we've had at Apple so far, for sure. Um, just to give you some some real life examples, um, I've worked in PMS for the last twenty years, and typically integrations to third party systems would be one of the biggest generators of support tickets into the PMS help desk, but probably also those third party help desks as well. Um, within Apple where we're very very focused on integrations, um, integrations typically only generate about less than ten percent of our calls. Um, in fact, the vast majority of calls that come into our help desk would be around how do I kind of questions users who perhaps haven't carried out a certain process for a couple of weeks and just need a reminder on how to do it. Um, so that would be uh, one key point. Um, and just as an average, just to give you a sense, we, we average 1.2 pre-COVID. So it's, it's even less, obviously, now because we have hotels doing less generally. But pre-COVID, we were averaging 1.2 calls per property per month. Um, as a PMS vendor, that's quite a low number. So I think with the technology that's available today, the integrations that you can achieve are much, much more robust, much, much more stable, and also have the benefit of providing the guest with a better experience. Offset that against um, having a few more vendors to manage. And, um, you know, I think most people who have been down the route already would agree that they're in a better situation today. Thank you very much. Now, um, another question has come in is about how automation is about re reducing 
the hotel's reliance on staff. But the concern here is, will hoteliers end up having to hire new staff who've got the training and the skills to develop and implement these new solutions? Uh, if I uh, head over to Michael first. Very good question. I, I think that the key bit is there, there will be some new responsibilities in defining what processes need to be automated. So you have experts on staff who can do that. But once those are defined, I don't think that there's any reason to hire new staff because at least for clear chain travel, we offer that solution as essentially a managed um, service. So what we're trying to do is replace <clears throat> the activities that are sort of uh, drudgery and time that's taken away without any kind of emotional or mental input by a lot of the staff, replace those with software and let those people go out and thrive and be creative and do the things we just talked about in the last question. Thank you. Now I have head over to Jirish, um, where is technology really for an area that has already worked off clipboards and uh, and, and paper based. So is, is this something that you, you find? Is this a challenge for your customers of having to find and, and hire new people? Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, you know, we, we have been working with several companies, you know, just uh, switching over from the radio and paper systems to the technology. Um, it is tough initially, you know, the initial three months is where we need to be, you know, really working together just to get that habit going on, because most of these people, you know, the, you know especially the, the low grade uh, stuff, they may not be used to any technology. So you have to work with them, need, you know, we need to bring in some sort of uh, reporting formats that make sure that you know, everybody adopts to this technology. We have all that inbuilt. We train the team uh, with the existing team. You don't need to hire anyone new. On board and tool is very easy to use, even for just like WhatsApp. You can use like you know simple tool. And um, how about within housekeeping yourself then, Micah? Is there a lot of training that needs to be done to get housekeepers using these May bots or uh, does it uh, learn itself? How, how do you handle the implementation there? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think it all starts with the user, right? And if you don't have user adoption, then the, the value of the product solution isn't, it doesn't exist. So uh, in the context of housekeeping, what's been interesting is uh, a lot of these you know, users that we have with our current client base, I've never seen a robot before, right? Um, and then we've seen in certain properties, they speak nine, 10, 11 languages in the same department. Uh, so you also have that, you know, um, really being able to make it universal. Uh, so that helps really drive the user interface design uh, and making it as simple as possible. And kind of one of my mottos is the best UI is no UI, ideally, right? If the robot could just do everything by itself, that's the best setup. Uh, so we're working towards that. Um, and I'd say, you know, things like the setup. So uh, somebody on the panel mentioned earlier, uh, you know, really a, a big piece is being able to get the user to be able to set up their solution on their own. Uh, so drop shipability is a huge part of that, at least for us. Usually robotics takes weeks, um, but that makes a huge difference and just, you know, really makes it more seamless. Uh, and then I'd say overall, um, our training you know, takes 20 minutes, very simple. So just minimizing from going from point A to point Z. Uh, to get whatever you want to tackle you know completed and uh, being able to think through who is the actual person using this so uh, definitely a challenge on the housekeeping side but learned a lot through uh through the pilots thank you very much it sounds like it's important to find a partner who's going to support you through the implementation and provide the relevant uh, training and uh, so that uh, you can get the adoption as early and as quick as possible which we often see of a lot of systems right if you don't support uh, the, the, the users in, in adopting the technology then it's just going to be a wasted investment um, a question now over to Eric and it's in regards to uh, upsells uh, what are the perhaps top five upsells that hoteliers can use to encourage courage and add value to um, the post COVID-19 guest? Yeah, I love this question so much. <laughs> we had a, a big brainstorm using, using data that we had and, and just uh, intuition and in, in interviews. And we ended up with actually 50 deals. We shortlisted 15 that we built into the product. And I have the list in front of me. I'm going to share a few with you. Um, long stay so give discounts or perks for extended stay so you have a lot of fewer guests staying with you incentivize them to extend their stay 
Um, we have turned down housekeeping. Um, it will be a big challenge that hotels will have fewer uh, operational staff. This is a rather popular deal today already. And we think with, uh, with uh, guests staying at a hotel, understanding that the hotel is under a tremendous amount of pressure, this can help be like a way for the guests to give back. Um, so that's not turning down housekeeping to make it less clean, but that's during the stay. Uh, and other things to regard, regard to health and safety. So personal safety kit, uh, pre-booking car slot. We expend, expect a lot more to travel by car. And some cool things like you can donate uh, loyalty points or other things to charity, sanitize private vehicles for, for transfer. Obviously the breakfast, breakfast buffet won't exist anymore maybe. Uh, lunch, dinner, high tea, anything you can imagine in the room. And then some very cool things, because I won't mention all of them, but you can uh, sign up on our website and we can share them all. Um, but uh, one thing I think we all love is when you go away with your partner or friends or family that you can do some cool things in the room. So one great example is like a do-it-yourself cocktail kit uh, that you can basically make cocktails in the room. Lovely. That sounds like a great weekend away. Um, yeah. And that is a 90 day free trial and no commitment until uh, you finish the trial. Is that right? Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. Now, we've got a question. I guess it's for everybody. Um, but um, if we if we had this question over to Alan, uh, most hotels have put a freeze on CapEx projects uh, since COVID-19 kicked in. Is it realistic to expect uh, hoteliers to have the funds to implement new technology now? Um, and, and especially, uh, and, and we had a similar question uh, come in um, from one of our uh, listeners here, is, uh, is the fact that you know, obviously they're trying to get the bookings in first. So what about this investment? Should they be making it? And, and what happens if you don't have the cash for it? Um, well, uh, I think in the case of modern cloud-based solutions, um, CapEx is quite often eliminated uh, anyway. Um, there are, of course, exceptions to that. I mean, if we think about the contactless guest journey, quite often there's been uh, some talk about being able to provide mobile key to the guest so that the guest can use their mobile phone use an app to let themselves into the room when they arrive so that they don't have to go to the check-in desk to pick up a key and they don't have to deal with all the hygiene considerations around that. But of course, in that particular instance, there might well be some capex required to implement that because your, your lock system in the hotel may not necessarily support that level of capability. And that could be quite a significant capex project. On the other hand, for other solutions such as online check-in, um, even PMS, of course, online checkout, um, automated payment, um, guest messaging platforms, chatbots, all that kind of stuff that can allow you to demonstrate to your guests that you have COVID-19 at the forefront of your strategy and you are providing them with a safe experience. Those are typically all cloud-based SaaS solutions which don't have any CapEx um, element to them. I mean, certainly in the case of Apaleo, we're, we're zero CapEx. That doesn't mean we don't provide service as part of the implementation. It's just that our model is based on a subscription fee per room per month, which if you're a true SaaS player is what you will be doing. It might not be per room per month, but it'll be a monthly subscription fee. So I would argue that with the um, technology that's available today, you should be able to do that um, largely. There are occasional exceptions, of course, largely CapEx free. And um, you should also be in a position to do that now because you can deploy these, these uh, solutions remotely without having to have engineers visit site and all that kind of stuff as well. So you can keep your overheads down in that respect as well. And do you have any special uh, joining uh, options right now like Oki? Yes, as I mentioned at the um, in my presentation, we've joined forces with Oki and I think 38 other um, vendors. That was the count as of yesterday anyway, who are connected to us. And we're basically saying to hotels that want to reopen with a tech stack that will allow them to offer that, um, that experience to the guest and demonstrate to the guest that they're thinking about COVID-19. Um, it's, it's mixed, but from an Apaleo perspective, it's zero upfront cost. We will get you up and running in a matter of days. Uh, we did a 99 bedroom hotel that was live in seven days last week. Um, and we will uh, do that at no cost, risk-free for six months. If after six months you'd want to move on, that's great. If you keep our system, we're even happier, of course. And the 39 vendors that are supporting us in that have various offers from, from typically three months up to six months to support that as well. 
Uh, certainly, um, since um, the lockdown, there's been a huge number of uh, different offers coming out from uh, vendors across the marketplace and yeah. um, for different markets as well. So uh, I, I certainly recommend that people check out their industry associations, um, some of the uh, local um, hospitality publications who've got lists of some of these offers. But obviously, Apaleo um, have a great list that you can work with with Oki. So uh, a great point of contact to start with. Uh, if we head uh, for a question now uh, to uh, Jirish, um, how do you see interaction points within a hotel changing for the post-COVID guest? And in what ways do you see on-property system providers needing to adapt? Yeah, actually, uh, it really starts from pre-stay. I mean, uh, people actually, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Eric, when he was presenting it, he mentioned it a little bit. Uh, people now are looking at uh, safety factors even right before even exploration phase. So they look at uh, different factors like, you know, how far it is and what are the safe methods to stay, park, etc. Uh, that is the initial interaction where we start. And then once they are in the property, there need to be very, you know, touchless uh, interactions, mainly because everybody wants to be safe. So, uh, you know, we have mobile check-in, mobile check-out, payments and everything that's enabled, um, you know, which enables these touchless solutions. More, uh, more on the staff operation side. Um, I believe, you know, once you're, you know, um, as Alain mentioned, we have keyless uh, solutions right now, which is available where we need, we have a, you know, a door which is enabled with digital key and you have mobile, we can, you know, just, touch to the door and it opens up. These are new technology that's coming up. But uh, some, some, not every hotel is able to afford it. So most of it would be, uh, some of them will be still using the RFID keys. Uh, so you can reduce the contact. You cannot you know, completely remove the contact. Then we have uh, staff operations, which is mainly the other problem that most of the op um, hotels will be facing you will have reduced staff and more requirements, more requests from the uh, guest. So people will be re not ready to touch your, you know, what I assume is the phone or the devices or other switch ports, things like that, that uh, is there in your room. So the problem is to offer touchless, you need to have solutions that they are, you know, considerably safe is smartphone of the guest itself. So provide smartphone applications, which are, you know, which can basically control your room units and also communication with your staff so that they can book a room, uh, book a restaurant or spa, or you can even order in, you know, in room dining, these, these kind of facilities from their smartphone itself. So that, that would be the change that we are going to see in the near future. Thank you very much indeed. Um, now, if I head over to uh, Michael O'Connell um, about um, examples of using uh, robotic process automation within hotels to improve operational um, efficiency. Uh, can you give any, any examples there? Sure, one example we've worked with um, in a proof of concept pilot is room block management. So when you have a group that's blocked a, a room and that increment and decrement different people, they come and go during the period leading up to the stay itself. Right now that involves a lot of back and forth of emails, faxes, uh, written paper sometimes. So what we've been able to do is automate that process so that we have the software that runs that and makes it more accurate, gives it a better audit trail that's more accurate and allows the event planner as well as the hotel, the group meeting uh, sales group um, to understand what's going on in real time. And then when the um, stay is done, all of the bills are paid in an accurate manner instead of somebody fishing through their drawer for a fax that was sent three weeks ago and things like that. So that's been something we've been very successful with. Um, now, so is um, RPA better suited to chain hotels? To me, it, there's really not a difference. I think that the in, in the current environment to the question that was just asked, perhaps for some smaller independent hotels, the, the imperative to keep the doors open is more important right now. And I know that the cash flow issue is, is paramount. So for us, we're seeing a little more um, 
response from chain hotels because we're looking at it from an enterprise point of view. But at the end of the day, if every, all the conditions are the same economically, uh, process automation applies equally to small hotels, small groups, boutiques, and independents as it does to chains. Thank you very much. Uh, heading over to Micah, um, how do you calculate return of investment uh, for any new investment that's made in on-property hardware like robots and contactless check-in or payment terminals? Yeah, that's a really good question. So definitely depends on the use case. But when we look at it, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward in terms of time saved. So, uh, you know, in the example I gave earlier, um, how many more rooms can be cleaned, right? Or what are the other certain tasks or responsibilities that can be done in that period of time? Um, and then in terms of public space cleaning or servicing there, you know, similar. So uh, it's pretty straightforward for, for our use case in terms of a formula uh, of number of hours and then how that could impact staffing and uh, how that relates to you know wages, salaries, and uh, the financial impact there. Um, and then actually, uh, you know, Alan, I think touched on this, um, the idea of really being more of a OPEX versus CAPEX. So a lot of robotics companies have also been doing uh, robots as a service. So just like software as a service, uh, as a way to show an ROI faster um, and to start seeing savings right away. So I think those two things combined uh, are how you can pretty quickly calculate, you know, the actual savings per month. Thank you. Now, um, I guess this goes back uh, to a question about uh, sort of investment, uh, really, in technology. But if we are to be realistic, today, it's all about survival. Um, and this is just additional costs that are going to go into um, making the hotel, uh, the, 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 the cash flow for the hotel, the cash uh, hotel's bottom line. Um, how exactly can you say that technology is 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 able to be part of that uh, journey for the hotel to help them survive? Uh, can I go to Alan first? Good question. Um, I think it depends, really. I think we would need to split that question into two. One is, um, you know, whether we're looking at systems that are replacing legacy systems, um, in which case. Um, on a SaaS model um, where it's OPEX focused, even on that basis, um, most people will see a, a, a significant reduction in their total cost of ownership when they move to lean, modern, um, intuitive cloud solutions. So if you're switching systems, I think the argument is, is, is pretty um, supportable. Um, and of course, the, the, the automation and the integrations that those modern solutions enable also have their own um, ROI case, and um, and it's probably quite easy to demonstrate a reduction in overall cost on that basis as well. Where you're introducing new technology into a hotel that hasn't previously existed, of course, you know you might be looking at some cost there. A little bit more difficult, and perhaps there are other people on the panel who are better better placed to answer that question than me. But I would say that um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes, especially if we in the context of COVID nineteen and a post coronavirus landscape, you know, sometimes we have to look at um, well, what's, what's, what's our world going to look like if we don't do this? And I hate saying that, and I would never normally you know, say something as negative as that because who wants to hear a sales guy being negative about these, or, or selling in a negative way, and I'm not even selling here, right? But, but the simple reality is that um, it may well be that you know, the, 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 the cost has to be justified by the, by the, 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 the volume of, of reservations that that will generate that otherwise would not come to your hotel if you didn't offer that that, uh, that journey to the guest, you know, who might choose the hotel next door that was offering it. I feel really bad saying that. Almost want to rewind and delete that entire statement. <laughs> but perhaps well, uh, I see Michael's going to save me. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, Michael, do you, do, you, do you want to come in there and contend his answer? Um, I, well, I, I just, I guess I, I put a little different spin on it because I also don't want to be negative. Um, but what we've seen success with, and this is more of an inside the business thing, is to go to the investor in the hotel. And this is it's kind of a follow up on your question about is a chain versus an independent hotel more likely to, to work in technology uh, investment right now. So we've been going to the ownership and making the case that you know, they'll, they're going to lose more money if they don't make an investment in the short run to get us from you know, the current situation to post-COVID recovery. And we've been able to talk to the investors from a pure 
you know, this is your investment that you're trying to save as opposed to bothering the people at the hotel who are really just concerned with the things we've been talking about of getting somebody in the door and staying, you know, for three nights and getting their money. So for us going up one level in the ownership structure has worked well from a business point of view to approach those investors, look at them and say, you know, this is how you save your investment. A longer term investment is better than a short term investment now, but it's a little easier um, uh, pitch is probably the wrong word, but a little easier message to get across to the people who control the long-term investment uh, success or not. Lovely, thank you very much indeed. And Jirish. All right, actually, uh, I have a different take. I mean, because a uh, couple of things that I want to point out here. Uh, I agree everybody is having tough time, everyone uh, in this call having tough time. Uh, but at the same time, there are a few things that we have to make like, one of that is more than revenue, you also need to make cost cutting. So that's another way of being, you know, uh, in, the, in the limelight. Uh, so in, in, in another uh, uh, points, I've just noted down a few points here, which I wanted to call up. Uh, one of my customer, we recently closed it last week, uh, 15 hotels in India, which actually uh, we, we went for uh, a one month of, you know, flat fee initially, but this group, you know, they were not sure how the customers are going to come back and how that journey would be. So we had to then go in a method of, you know, um, realized model. So every booking and every usage will be having a small percentage. So uh, companies out here today, I think every panel members are ready to work with the hotels to make use accessible. Um, uh, and we all have to work together to overcome this tough time. Uh, but just to, uh, you know, uh, bring you some uh, major points of our platform, we could actually, one of the uh, groups, we could actually reduce or save 22% of the productivity of the staff. That's a huge cost, I mean, when you operate. And uh, we could also increase around 15% of the revenue uh, because of the CRM you are now reducing the OTA fees, which otherwise you are paying 25 to 35% to someone, a third party, which would have been saved. Uh, and then, uh, you know, in our solution, at least, we don't have to buy any devices. You still work with your own smartphone that you uh, use, and then um, the staff can bring their own devices if you allow, and the guests use their smartphone. So there's no um, CapEx or, you know, buying any devices for operating. Uh, main other uh, survey that I want to, you know, just push here is a recent survey says 60%, you know, the 60 percentage of the guests prefer people having a mobile check-in facility to book for. So they are looking at this feature. So unless, you know, you are looking for uh, solutions that your guest is actually looking for, then there will be a problem. So you have to find out uh, what is important. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Jirish. Now we're coming to time. Uh, we've got very, uh, just got about a minute now before we come to close. Uh, but just to let you all know that this video uh, will be available on travelmarket.life and as well as a podcast so that uh, you can share and, and listen to again. Uh, all of our panelists uh, are available for follow up and to uh, answer any um, of the, uh, any other questions that you may have um, as you start to think about some of these systems and the role that some of these technologies could play within your hotel. I think that a lot of them, all the panelists would agree that it's about experimentation where you have the time to experiment in a time when we have so much uncertainty uh, that we've all had to uh, be put out of our comfort zones and we are dealing with a low touch economy where it is much harder to uh, reach uh, our consumers as they are working across a myriad of different uh, platforms and the challenges that we're going to have around uh, supply and, and, and demand and our, our different different sales partners and whether they're going to survive. But most importantly, um, how do you keep your hotel as efficient as, as possible and uh, reducing the overhead costs to ensure that you're maximizing the performance of every aspect of your hotel? And uh, as Alan points out with uh, PMS, uh, the opportunity there to be able to plug in a huge number of different applications and systems um, just allows you to have that greater flexibility and agility that you don't necessarily get with um, long long-term legacy systems uh, whereby, whereby
why there has uh, a need for the development um, of integrations. Now, on that note, um, I'd like to thank Scient again for their sponsorship. Um, these guys are very much uh, involved with development of system integrations and ensuring that uh, multiple uh, technologies and platforms are able to talk to each other and share that uh, most important data to bring those efficiencies uh, for, for you uh, and, and for your team. I'd also like to thank again Michael McCartan uh, for organizing this session. And please do uh, keep uh, up to date with uh, what's happening for uh, future hotel tech clinics um, and uh, join our newsletter on travelmarket.life. Thank you guys uh, for joining us. Jirish, thank you indeed. Thank you. Micah, all well for the rest of your day. Also to you, Eric over there in Amsterdam. Alan, thanks for joining us. And to you as well, Michael.